Mendelspot.com Advancing Life Science Research, Connecting People and Ideas. We're in San Diego at the Office of Competitive Group, and we're joined by Eric Clausen, the managing partner here. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Thanks for having me. So we were just doing an interview with one of your clients, and then we got talking about how you prep your clients for PR, for this kind of thing. And I thought it would be great to have on our program so that our audience could see and maybe benefit from some of these tips. So we just had Marco on. What would you, what did you go over with him? Sure. I think um, you know the most important thing, particularly working with life science companies, executives, and scientists um, who are trying to communicate what they're doing and its relevance, uh, is to determine your story. You know, and really distill it into its basic messages and also empathize with the people that you're trying to communicate to so that you can make it relevant to them. So in, you know, in this case, really sitting down and mapping out what you want to say in, in a concise way. Uh -huh. um, so that's what we do as journalists. I mean, I'm always looking for the story. And what I usually ask guests, if, I'm, if I have a chance to talk to them before the interview, mm -hmm. I'll just ask them, what's the headline for this? Right. And it sort of forces them to, to condense, right? Because they know headlines are, are short and they need to be grabby and they need to somehow summarize it. So what do you do to get people to open up and find their story? We do that frequently. We'll focus on the headline. Uh, we find that frequently people will uh, get lost in trying to find the right words rather than focus on the idea. And that's, you know, telling a good story, you have to really focus on coming up with the a good concept or idea first. The words will come. Yeah. You can polish and, and find the right words, but it's distilling it down into its essence, that idea or concept that needs to be communicated. Uh, another tool that we frequently use is you know talking to people and saying, if you were saying, if you were telling the story or talking about what you do or the research that you're working on to a layperson or to you know your uncle at a at a holiday party, you know, what how would you describe it? How do you talk about it in the simplest terms? And that usually gets them distilling down their story and breaking it down into its essence. And then you can elaborate and get more technical or detailed from there. But uh -huh. that's, that's so a good sort of bring them out of the details. You know, how would just a regular you know, lay person understand this? Yeah. Yeah. And it also allows them to step outside of the way that they do it and put themselves to empathize with their audience, to take them out and put themselves in the in the position of the person that they're talking to. Okay, so that was the second thing. Empathize with your audience. Mm -hmm. So imagine your audience sitting there. What do they want to hear? Mm -hmm. from me? What do they want to hear? And also, what do, you, what do you want them to hear? And it's not just I'm speaking at them, but I, there should be some call to action associated with it. I want them to either perceive my research or my organization a certain way, um, I want them to take an interest in it or to act maybe to support my organization, maybe to partner with me, maybe to, to be aware of the tools and instrumentation that I use. There are a lot of different things. So it's not just storytelling for the sake of storytelling. It's intentional. It should have a purpose. So what do you think makes a good story? Uh, I think there should be an arc to every story. Um, an arc. Oh, sort of journey. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's sort of basic storytelling. There needs to be a starting point and an end point. Um, and most often when in storytelling in this in the life science space, that arc isn't complete, right? You're somewhere either on the front side or at the peak, hopefully not yet at the conclusion. Um, in some cases that happens if a company's um, acquired or, you know, so, uh, treatment is delivered into the market, you reach the end of that arc. But I think there has to be a natural tension, drama to it um, that draws people in. They want to know where it's going and they want to try to figure out where along that, that arc they are, that, that they're at. And so you know, that's that sort of basic storytelling tool is something that we use in mapping out what we want to say. So what are a couple of stories that you can tell us about working with? <laughs> with scientists or, or people in the life sciences sure. prepping them. Yeah. I think um, it, it's an interesting... You don't have to name any names. Yeah, <laughs> the, the names will, be, um, will remain silent to protect the innocent. Um, I think that uh, it's a generalization, but uh, scientists tend to be um, introverted. They are fo more focused, and rightfully so, on their science, on their research, than on 
communicating it. I think a really important thing to keep in mind is it's really important to communicate science to non-scientists and to those that are also going to support and advance the organization. So we really work with scientists to step out of that, to recognize the importance in communicating what they're doing, um, what its potential outcomes are, and to still remain factually accurate and, and, and technical when necessary, but also be able to communicate. So that process requires us to work with scientists and allow them to become comfortable um, doing interviews like this. Uh, and you know that sitting down with them and practicing their answers and shortening and tightening their answers and making sure that it's it's easily understood by all of the audiences you want to reach. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say you know a really uh, interesting example of that we worked with um, with a researcher who's going to do a TV interview. Um, absolutely a subject matter expert, um, knew the material inside and out, was scared to death of the camera. And, and that could just be a natural stage fright. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, and so trying to get somebody comfortable with the material is the, the first thing. And when they're subject matter experts, like most um, of the people that you know, are desirable candidates to be interviewed, they are subject matter experts. Uh, and so fortunately you're starting with good content, but it's getting them comfortable in, in relating it. So the, in that one example, you know, a three hour session before a five minute on camera interview to get them comfortable enough to be able to not freeze up in front of the camera. Fortunately, that, that one worked out. <laughs> okay, so this person sat down with you and they were just panicking. They, they went from- Their thoughts were not coming together. Yeah, they went from shaking hands three hours earlier to- Their hands shaking. Literally shaking um, and unable to you know, really form a, a coherent thought um, to comfortable sitting in, in a well-lit multi-camera studio and, and telling their story. So I've interviewed a lot of scientists and they, it's like they say, okay, I need to do this. I need to get this out there and, mm -hmm. you know, by hook or by crook, I'll just get the message out. Are there things that you tell them or hints that you give them that can sort of polish their presentation a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the, the presentations themselves, the actual presentation, the materials that they use can do a lot of that. Uh, it really varies. You know, we have, we work with some scientists to, to try to communicate that have presentations with loads of text with bullets. And they, we have others that just go with simple imagery. And they, it seems that those that tend to rely less on printed materials, on written word, on a, on a slide deck, if you will, um, tend to do a much better job. They're more relaxed. They're forced to rely upon what they already know. Um, and so we try to get them to a point where uh, they're not relying on printed materials, on the written sheet in front of them that says you know, what they're trying to say. Oftentimes they know the material. We're trying to simply get them to a comfortable state where the words are practiced, where the, the, they can draw out the information that they already know to, to position it correctly. So a lot of what we do is uh, you know, we're sort of uh, therapists at times, trying to get them comfortable and get them to a lot place of psychology. Where, yeah, where they can you know communicate what they what they know that they need to communicate.